Hey there, how's it going? This is uh, Blue over at You Can Blue, and what I'm doing at the moment is I shall be showing you how to bring a uh, custom import into Mega Scans, and then we're going to use that and just a couple of extra maps um, inside of Unreal Engine, and I'm going to wire it up properly so that you guys can see. Okay, so dead easy. So I'm just going to create a new asset, and my new asset I'm going to call it Toil. Broken floor, just so I know what it is. Um, using a metalness workflow, 2048, just click create. Okay. I want to import a surface, and this is where I'm going to put it all. So I'll find my folder, which is tile broken floor. Now, this is one that I got from. Uh, Tanner's website, which I think is 3dtextures.net. He'll kill me if I forget, but sorry, Tanner. And um, I'm going to throw the diffuse into here. So let's go in here, like so. And I want to get my diffuse. Now it should hopefully start to um, auto populate the rest of them. And as you can see, it's created this, which it's not great, but it'll do, you know. Um, I don't think we've got any cavity maps in here or any metalness maps in here. But we have got ambient occlusion, so that should be enough. Next. No, I need displacement still. And we have displacement, that's D, so I'll just click on here. There we go. Displacement, that would be this one. Wow, rough as. Doesn't matter, we don't need it very heavy. Uh, I don't think we've got cavity or metalness. So next, okay, I'm going to adjust the height because we need a little bit of height, but not loads. And the area is going to be two meters by two meters. And we're going to call it tiles floor. Okay, region, let's say, I don't know, blighty. And the biome can be. My own a house with no construction. Building isn't a biome, I know, but it'll help me categorize it and click import. Please select a material for my surface. All right, construction. Okay, now if I just zoom that up a bit and we can save, but well, we don't need to really, I need to add it in first. So I'm going to click add. Should see it just there. There we go. And I can get increase my repetitions should I want. So there we go. That will uh, make this a wee bit smaller for a two meter by two meter. And then I can kind of add other things onto it if I want. So I don't know, maybe. You are this. It's not really ideal, but you get the kind of idea. Okay, and then I'm going to stick a bit of water on it. Like that. And I think underneath the water, just here, I'm going to add a layer of stones. So let's find some stones. There's some. Okay. And I'll just put in some teeny little raised parts there. Just increase the frequency a bit. Okay, that's nice. Much more of a used look going on there. And then maybe add a couple of stones to it. So nothing complicated. I mean, this is all stuff that you can do in literally minutes, you know. And I'm going to have that on above. And reduce the threshold significantly. Just get some rocks into this rubble a bit. There we go. Well, rubble a bit of rocks. Yeah, that looks okay. I like that. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to save as a surface. And I'm going to call it 
Let's come up with a nice name for it, shall we? Um, dirty old tiled floor with water. Just nice and descriptive. Uh, construction. Region custom. Uh, no, I don't care. I'm just going to click save. Okay, so what this will do is it will create the maps necessary. And then we should be okay to go. Okay, that is done. So close that down. Bye bye. And here we have a project that I was working on the other day. Um, now I am going to open up my output folder just here. And if you look here in my documents, Megascan Studio Projects, My Asset Surfaces, there's dirty old tile floor with water. Okay, and as you can see, we've got quite a lot of stuff here. So ambient occlusion, albedo, cavity, displacement, metalness, normal, and roughness. Lovely. Okay, no gloss. No, no gloss. I'll use cavity for that then. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clear this out and I'm going to go to YCB assets and I'm going to make a surface, a new folder, and call it surface 3, just so I know what it is. And then I am going to click and drag all of these, possibly including this rather large EXR. Well, I don't want this really uh, opened with that, so I'm just going to open Photoshop. take a moment. Still not taking a moment. There we go, there's Photoshop. And let's see, dirty old tiled floor with water. Control C. Open. And there it is, EXR. Okay, that's our displacement map very subtle. Okay, I'm going to save this as, um, let's see, probably a target. So, I don't want to save it as any of these, this means I'm going to have to probably drop down the mode that we're in. No, nope, don't want to do that. Seventy-two pixels per inch. RGB color thirty-two. Background contents white. Save as. I still really use these darn things. Sort it. Then I'll use it as an EXR for the time being. So because it's so often that I don't use EXRs that I've completely forgotten how to convert it. However, I'm sure someone helpful on my YouTube channel will shout blue, remember? And I'll be like, oh, okay. Anyway, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these fellows, right? So let's pop them over here. And we'll get the importation. What we should do, anyway. There we go. Let's wait for them to do their thing. And following the advice I got off a very helpful chap in YouTube the other day, um, I'm going to do a couple of modifications to these textures regarding compression. So I'll just save all these. Shall only take a moment, thankfully, thanks to SSDs. I always use a special test kind of... Uh, project just to mess around on. Always recommend it. Anyway, so I don't want to change the albedo, so I'm going to change all these, except for the normal map. So just hit return. And kind of wondering, oh I see, there it is. Right, so what I want to do here is change my compression. And my compression is going to go to masks with no SRGB. Each time I convert it, I'm then going to click save. Okay, it's the same here. This looks a lot like metalness. Masks, no SRTB. Because we only need to use one channel. 
Um, most materials, well, all materials, when we import them, are going to kind of split it off into alpha, red, green, and blue. Right, this is HDR. Okay. Again, I just need a mask. Okay, and that'll reduce the size of our resorts considerably. Remember, I'm using 2K assets as well. So, again, that uh, texture group, my mistake. Uh, da, 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 masks, no SRGB. And this one. Okay, that's done. Right, what I'm going to need to do is, I'll just move these over here. I'm going to need to, um, sorry, I'm just checking this is working. Yeah, it is. I'm going to need to um, build a material for these. Now, I should have a suitable material to drop this onto. If I don't, I can easily make one, sorry, mesh to drop this onto. If not, I've got plenty in 3ds Max. Um, I'm just going to have a quick look, though, on my game dev folder because I sometimes keep suitable items here that I can use so as you see this is my old game dev folder from when I was creating um, the outsider lots of stuff in here let's see all scans rocks maybe it's in textures lots of textures in there then maybe in assets Look for floor. No, it does not look like it. Never mind, I'll just make do with what I've got then. Like I say, worst case, I can always create one. So, what I need to do now is I need to make this material. So, I'm going to create a material from this. Okay, and that way we'll get like a decent name for it. like so and I'm going to just load that up and just bring it over to here so we can see it okay because what I need to do here is I need to make a material that is basically one that we can kind of adjust on the fly to get a good look now just to make sure I'm doing this the right way Sorry about this, I'm just quickly working out what I'm doing here. Okay, so what I want is I want the ambient occlusion and I want the cavity map. Okay, so I'm going to move these up to here and these are going to sit basically adjusting with multipliers my um, base texture down here, which is my albedo. So, what I want to do here is I want to create this, which is a material expression constant. I'm going to just keep it with a value of 0 at the minute, right click and convert it to a parameter. Okay, and then for parameter name and parameter group, just in case I need to sort these out. So, I know this is my ambient occlusion. Okay, so in here, I'm going to change this to AO underscore params okay whoops put it in a bit I'll just put it in here AO params okay and then we'll have three settings for this so I'm gonna have low and that's got a default value of zero now I picked this um, idea up I don't I didn't used to use levels but when I was doing some research yesterday I'm just gonna control C control V on this by the way um, yesterday when I was kind of messing around trying to improve my workflow I came across a rather nice um, stream that had been done by someone over on the actual Quixel YouTube channel and it was excellent really really enjoyable so I looked at that and uh, got a lot of good tips from this what this will allow us to do basically is tweak our um, what do you call it tweak our 
levels because we're going to use um, three levels on this and then we're going to feed it into a multiply twice anyway I'm going to change this to high because our high value on average will be one okay and then I'm going to create okay three point levels like that I know it looks mad complex if you never used it before trust me it uh, blew my mind slightly as well and then I'm going to put oops there we go the low into the new black value the medium into the middle value and the high into the new white value okay and then for the texture I'm going to feed in this I'm going to grab the whole lot of this and do a control C and a control V like that just keep them tidy that way you know where everything on your material is and then in the same way that that one's ambient occlusion parameters this one is going to be see that cavity so we're going to change this to cavity parameters and this is going to give our model a lot more depth so again just change this and the reason I'm doing this is because I'll be able to make an instance material and I'll be able to make basically loads of instance materials that all look slightly different and at the same time I'll be able to um, reduce the amount of draw calls and the amount of overheads considerably anyway here's our current texture sample coming in yeah so what I'm going to do is press M and click and press M and click that gives me two multiplies and if I press here and here what's nice is that I can actually preview them didn't used to be able to do that now you can so I'm going to feed that into B and that straight across into A and again I'm going to feed this into A oops a daisy come back you just break that there we go and the result of this will then feed into here and then that will feed straight into the base color like that okay now the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to bring in um, the roughness okay which is obviously my roughness material should be around here somewhere displacement texture roughness there we go now with my roughness what I can do is I can adjust it um, so if I was to press 3 and just click here and then inside there pull this all the way up to white then hit M for multiply okay and then I shall connect these two together one and two okay and these are going off to my roughness right now I'm going to promote this or convert this rather to a parameter okay and this parameter name is going to be well it's roughness isn't it so roughness and I'm going to put it inside a group called roughness that way we know exactly what it is if you're passing it on to some lucky third person they'll go ah roughness understood okay so it'll make it more popular okay and then the last thing I need to do is I need to put in the displacement and the normal map now again I can adjust the normal map by strength if I want to um, actually I'm going to probably change this from roughness to normal let's have a look, I'll delete that I'm going to change this to a simple parameter like so and convert it to a parameter like that roughness and see if I still have the roughness group no, so I'll change, make that in roughness group. Okay. I like how it's multiplying it by nothing, so I've got that rather nice like line straight down the middle there. Okay, pop that in there. I'll put that over there so it's tidy. And then I want my normal map, which I'm going to grab and put it here. My normal map, I'm going to be able to basically amplify or, you know, make more subtle. So I'm just going to put a multiply in. There it is. And underneath that, I'm going to press 3 and click. And that will give me a 3 vector, which I shall convert to a parameter and call normal strength. Like 
like so. And then in here, I'm going to make a group called normal strength. Like so. And I'm going to wire these two up. I just want to uh, quickly do that. Okay. And then I'm going to pull my multiplier across. Before I do, actually, I'm going to change. R to 2, G to 2, and B to 0.5. There we go. Okay, let's drop that in there. Lovely. Lots and lots of twinkles going on there, so isn't that lovely? Okay, and now what I need to do is create the um, displacement. So I need to convert my material over here. Um, at the moment, my material is step bog standard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to PN triangles. Turn off my adaptive tessellation. I'm not going to bother putting a max displacement in. And this appears to be very yellow. So Oh, hang on. Duh. What am I thinking? It was supposed to be yellow, wasn't it? <laughs> I'm a bit silly. It could have been green, actually. I'm quite colorblind, remember. Okay, so I'm going to get my displacement, which is here. Just drag that out. Okay, and that's just going to start here. Like so. And now I am going to press 1 and click. Right click, convert to parameter, and we'll call this displacement level okay Does I know what it is oh, hang on no it's the wrong one I always put these in the wrong place don't I there we go and I'll call this displacement sorry I'm a bit bumbly sometimes when I'm having to talk and think at the same time human beings aren't designed to talk and think they're designed to hold martinis that's about it Okay, now I'm going to combine these two fellows. So, one to there, one to there. And we can see the result if I just click in there like that. And I'm going to give this a displacement slider default, sorry, default of one. Okay. Next. I'm going to create a new parameter down here, so click one, right click, sorry I was just making sure that thing had caught up, convert to parameter, I'm going to call this one um, distance, no, no I do not, bugger off, just I'm recording, distance, and I'm going to put this under displacement, like so, and I'm going to apply another multiply to it, Okay, and I'm going to change my base parameter to 10. It's a nice, nice number. Mm. Okay, let's add these two together, or rather multiply these two together. There we go. And again, we can see the result there. And then, just check I've got this right. Scene to Actually, no, I haven't. Uh, Honestly, so much things to think. Okay, because I've got my distance, but I need to now add in my vertex normal WX. Otherwise, I won't have a clue what it's doing. So there's my vertex normal. Okay, and this is going to multiply with this and a second multiply just here. How wondrous. So that goes to there, that goes to there, that goes to there. And that goes to there. So, our displacement level is multiplied by our displacement texture, which is then obviously in here, multiplied by our distance parameter. Okay, and then that is combined with our vertex normal WS. Now, I'm also going to need my tessellation multiplier, which I shall create a new parameter for. Tessellation multiplier. Okay, and I'll put this under displacement, so we know where it is. 
And I don't know. What should I put the value in for that? Maybe uh, two or four. I'll put four in. Okay. Now, all I need to do now is put the tessellation multiplier here. My world displacement I will put here. Like so. And uh, uh, as onions as onions, that should be working. Let's have a look. Grab these. Yes, it is. We're getting displacement. Marvellous. Okay, now I'm just going to tidy this up a bit. So, select all these and hit C. Displacement. I do like nice tidy stuff. Normals. Roughness. And then finally, diffuse. And with these all labelled like so, I can now move them around, you see. So, diffuse can go up there, for example. Uh, you guys were supposed to be inside the diffuse, you know that. Like Bob Ross getting angry at his happy little trees. Uh, this one can go over here. Normal can go over there. Okay, so nice and tidy. So now we can see our dirty old tile floor with water 2k material. Okay, it's made this lot. I know we zoomed out quite far, but we've got our diffuse, our roughness, our normals, our displacement. Um, we can also obviously affect our um, metalness <coughs> and our specular, should you feel so inclined. Um, not going to though. So I'm just going to click save, which will compile our material. Give it a moment. Oh dear. Won't take too long, hopefully. Don't think I've got any questions on my uh, thingy. No? Good. Questions are bad. That one. Right. Close down my excess windows. And what can I do now? Well, first of all, I'm going to drag this cube out. Uh, let's see. How big is this cube? Not very. So let's make it bigger. Lovely. That will do. And I'm going to want to change its scale just a little bit. Shush cat. Like that. Okay, that way we get a perfectly serviceable floor. Right click, play from here. Okay, and here's my pop gun. That's cool. Okay, so I could just drag this onto here and it would work. However, we're all for kind of instancing and stuff. So create material instance. And please excuse me a moment. Oh, she's a very naughty cat. There we go. Sorry about that. Okay, so this is going to be our instance. So, we call it instance 01, just in case we need to make more. Control S. And what I can do is I can apply this straight away, or I can just double click on it. And bring it over here. Let's put it on plane. Oh, navigation's always fun. There we go. I've noticed I'm getting a bit of a gradient towards one edge there. So I'm probably going to have to check my material in a minute. Okay, just open that out like so. Very sparkly, isn't it? Just pull my original material in. I want to make sure it's wired up properly. Okay, so 0.51 in white, middle, black. No texture. Oh, that would explain a lot. Did wonder what was going on. Wait patiently and click save. 
This won't take a minute. Hopefully. Sometimes I'm at the mercy of being the old save button. So it gives me a chance to look around and see if I left a coffee on my desk, which I didn't. <sighs> Such is life. Okay, so as you can see now, we don't have that gradient, which is good because it was confusing me rather a lot. Okay, I'm just going to close that down. And this is starting to look a bit more. Oh, keep doing that. So I'm looking a little bit more sensible. Okay, so now I've got all my parameters that I can actually change here. Okay, so let's have a look and see what we've got. Uh, my normal strength at the minute, if I just open that out, is 2 to 0.5. I could change that perhaps if I wanted to 1.5, 1.5, 1.25. Uh, it just, you know, getting some edge definition on our model. It changes to a cube, it's less likely to be broken that way. Okay, so beautiful and sunny. There we go. Just try and get it in. Um, now, for displacement, I can increase or decrease my displacement level, which, as you see, will kind of send up or down. Like so, so the rocks start to stick out a bit more. Um, I can also change the distance. So that's how much it's being pushed out. Keep that at 10. And I can increase or decrease the tessellation multiplier here. So, you know, I can bring it down to 1, which will make it obviously much more simple. 2. We were on 4, so that's basically 4 iter iterations. 8. I'm going to keep mine on 4. Now I've got my ambient occlusion parameters here, so I can increase or decrease those. And I've got my roughness, which I can increase or decrease. So I'll just come up with a number that kind of works there for me, again. Um, let's see, ambient occlusion parameters. I can now mess around with these. Basically, like messing around with your levels in Photoshop, you know. It's more complicated than what we were originally doing, but at the same time, it's giving us a much nicer effect. Okay, that seems good. Oh, that's slightly itchy eyeball. Um, okay, so I'm going to click Save. And just close that off. And if I grab my instance, which is here, just drop it there, you can see that, obviously if I play from here, we get a much more, well, accurate look to it really, don't we? Now bear in mind that um, this is just a box, it doesn't actually have any definition or texture or whatever to it, you know, def uh, polygons to it really, it's just, you know crappy cube. Um, I do have a material in my assets. So if I grab out this, and I think it was Tile to Organic Area 2002, because one of them wasn't mapped correctly. Um, also, if I just show you, this is kind of what you end up with if you don't use parameters. Okay, so you can see there's no real depth going on here. Yeah. You can tell it's obviously not as complex a material as the one we currently have. Now let's replace that with this one. Okay, so now you can see the tessellations taking place. Lovely dirty looking mm. thing. It's good by the way, the dirty looking thing, we like that. Okay, so light being picked up in the right places, lots of reflection off the liquids. Lovely. Okay. Yes, there's a hole there. That's actually in the mesh, by the way. <sighs> Wasn't the best mesh I built. I'm sorry. Okay. So anyway, hopefully you found that useful. Um, if you haven't, then please drop me a message or you know write a aggravated comment on YouTube, and I'll try and deal with your problems. Um, with this covered, hopefully you found it easy enough to understand. If you haven't, 
give me a show. I'll try and break it down into a slightly simpler way if I can. But um, I only started using this technique yesterday, and again, thanks to. Hang on, let me just work out who it was actually who I'm thanking. So I should just see if I look to my YouTube channel and the other thing. I always have the news open. I think it's very important to watch the news. Right, so it was YouTube user. Hang on. Musahira, Musahadi McGrath. God, I hope I got that right. Musahadi McGrath. That is an awesome mix of names there. Musahadin and McGrath. I've known a few McGraths actually. Right. And a couple of Musahadins. Right, so I'm going to play from here. Again, have a look around. Remember, if you don't like it, that's cool. Now, last thing really I should point out on why we use material instances is let's say we've decided that we want, you know, to use this again, we want it to look slightly different. Well, all we need to do is clone the material. See that? Drag that one onto there. And I'm going to do this off screen, so apologies, but I can start messing around with this one. And now you can see this one and this one, even though they're the same texture, are fundamentally different in their looks. And remember I can control things like the metalness, the glossiness, the displacement, obviously. So let's say I shall increase the displacement level. Not too much, this starts to look a bit weird and funky. Okay. greener and pleasanter over there isn't it anyway I hope you guys have found this useful and or interesting like I say if you have that's great drop me a line say you like it if you don't that's fine drop me a line say you don't like it and I hope I see you soon on you can blue and until such a merry moment as that goodbye for now and ooh, I was gonna I was gonna switch to a lovely picture of me but uh, there you go let's try that one so until we meet next time, thanks very much for watching and uh, have a great day.